Okay, so this is problem 1.18 out of Taylor's Mechanics. And if you like these solutions, please give me a like and subscribe, and I'll do more. Okay, so the first part of this is we have to prove the area of this triangle is what's given there. Okay, so the best way to do this is to draw up a perpendicular here and create two right triangles. Okay. And what we'll see is B cross C, the magnitude of that cross product, which is what we're looking at here, is the magnitude of B, magnitude of C, sine of the angle between them, which is sine alpha. And we'll call this height here H because we can also see, since it's a right triangle, so, Katoa, that sine of the angle alpha is equal to opposite H over the hypotenuse C. Okay? So then, C times sine alpha is equal to H. And this, oops. Pen's kind of annoying with the new notes. I maybe need something new to do problems on because text mode just doesn't want to ever turn off. It's kind of annoying. Um, but let's try that again. There we go, I guess. Uh, so C sine theta well, that's just H. So the cross product, B cross C, is really just B times H. And again, let's remember that the area of a triangle is one half the base times the height. So if I divide both sides by a half, we get exactly what we want here we get that part okay now it's pretty easy to do this with C cross a as well okay as well as a cross B they're pretty similar um, if we do a cross B or the magnitude of a cross B Again, that's A, B, the magnitude of them. Uh, sine of the angle between them. In this case, it's gamma. Okay. But again, if we look at that right triangle, sine of gamma is equal to opposite over the hypotenuse of that triangle. That triangle's hypotenuse is, if we just did uh, basically this triangle, or this is A, well, it's going to be B, and that's H. This is gamma. So then the height is A sine gamma. Okay? Which is this. So the magnitude of the cross product A cross B is just B times H, where B is the base. Likewise, for B cross C, B was the base. And again, if you divide it by half, you get the equation that we would want. Okay, so that is that part. And we can do pretty much the same thing with C cross A. Might be helpful to think of this. Um, so C cross A. C cross A is just going to be A C sine beta. And if we think of the triangle, if we were to kind of tilt it here, where this is vector B, this is vector C, this is vector H or A, sorry. And we again drop a perpendicular here. So this you could imagine if you, um, it's hard to draw here, but if you were to rotate 
this triangle in such a way that A is now your base. That's essentially what I've drawn over here. Um, and I should say that cutting it in the middle, this is the base divided by two, and this is the base divided by two because we dropped the perpendicular um, right there in the middle there. But what you can see is, again, the height, the height is going to be the hypotenuse times sine beta, okay? So the area then is going to be one half the base times the height. And the base in this case is your vector A, but we want half of the base. So that's where the one half comes from, okay? And then for part B, it's pretty straightforward once we have these expressions. So if we have one half, right, A cross B, and we have um, one half B cross C, and we have one half C cross A, we can obviously multiply everything by two. And just equally, we can say that the cross product AB is equal to the cross product BC equal to the cross product CA. And then by definition, this is AB sine of, so we go over here and we look at the angle between um, we look at the angle between A and B here. So in this case, AB would be the gamma equals BC sine of the angle between B and C, right? Which looks like alpha. And then CA sine of the angle between them, which is beta. Okay? So now what we can do is we can set these equal to each other in such a way that we can find uh, relationships between them, okay? So let's start with this. We can say A times B times uh, sine of gamma equals BC sine alpha, just from the first two equations there. Obviously the B drops and we have A sine gamma equals C sine alpha. And now if we divide both sides by sine gamma, sine alpha, so I gotta do that here as well, sine gamma, sine alpha, you'll be left with A, the sine gamma's cross out, so you have sine alpha equals C over sine gamma okay which is the first two there so that's good uh, that's what we wanted the next thing we want to see so this is the first two and then we can say that B cross C is equal to C cross A so using the last uh, two parts there and that can be expressed as B times C, sine of the angle between them. So that would be uh, alpha, because we just did that one. And then CA sine, that one's beta, the one we didn't use. Again, obviously the C's cancel. And you have B times sine alpha equals A times sine beta. And we're gonna do the same trick we did with the other one. We're gonna divide by both sine factors. So sine alpha, sine beta. Of course, we have to do that to both sides. And when we do that, we'll be left with B over sine beta equals A over sine alpha. And we know that A over sine alpha also equals C over sine gamma. So we prove the law of sines here. So that's basically all there is to that. Uh, and if you like this and would like more solutions, please let me know.